всю ночку не спать, всю ночку не спать, ладой постельюшку стула. Thanks for coming for my life and music. It's the first time we've had two people on. <laughs> oh, great. oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, very much. Great. Um, so, who we should, should we start with? Should we start with Tony? Go on then. <laughs> okay. So, how did you get into music and what's your um, earliest musical memory? Oh, well. Um, I guess um, my dad was um, probably my biggest influence when I was a, a kid, you know, because he's a, he was a he was a folk musician. He was a very academic folk musician. He was a sort of librarian, um, university librarian. But he had his passion for English folk music, um, Morris dancing, all that sort of world, and that's the world that I grew up with. And so my earliest musical memories would have been him leading a children's workshop at a folk weekend in the New Forest and me sort of shaking a rattle of some sort of shakers. He used to make uh, percussion instruments out of household bottles, you know, things like plastic bottles and fill them with seeds and things like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so we had all these bizarre uh, instruments um, which would come out once a year <laughs> for this uh, weekend in, and it was a fantastic weekend. I loved it, you know, and, and that's, you know, I was probably about 
two or something when I first went and I just sort of sat there, <laughs> you know, shaking his rattles and things. And then I had a ukulele. And then I had a ukulele banjo that was, oh, that was you know, that was so cool, <laughs> not just a ukulele, but a ukulele banjo. And that, I was really pleased about that. It, it wasn't ours, though. It was, like, borrowed. So it didn't, I didn't, you know, it didn't have it forever. It just it disappeared again at some point. But I felt very cool when I had that. Great. And then I think I might progress to a guitar slightly bigger, maybe. And then... I think then by that time I would obviously started doing classical piano as as the you know I was probably eight or something and uh, and then I sort of he taught me how to kind of follow chords on the piano obviously to follow chords on on the ukulele and then you know did a sort of umcha vamping sort of style left right kind of thing with the, this sort of folk style um, but I loved it oh, it was great and the best. Sort of musical experiences were were that obviously that weekend and like at home when we'd have a session because that's the folk word you'd have a session like in a pub and so we'd do that at home with me and my brother and my dad and I'd be doing this umcha stuff on the piano and reading these chords uh, that was like the best and I suppose I was about ten I suppose something like that that sort of age. Fantastic. And, uh, and then I brought, and then I got into playing the clarinet again, classical stuff. Did all the classical grades, um, and uh, and again, you know, played a bit of clarinet in a folk kind of setting. Um, and as by that time, Sidmouth Folk Festival was a sort of feature for the family to go to uh, this big international folk festival, as it was back then. Um, uh, doing the workshops and we, we camped and it was a lovely sort of experience down in Sidmouth and then I took clarinet there and would sort of improvise sort of in that in that world but at the same time I was doing all the classical grades and playing in youth, or, youth orchestras and so on, um, the local Southampton youth orchestra and things like that. So yeah, so um, that was my earliest experiences, I guess. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. So this is down on the south coast? In the... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we lived in Southampton. Right. Yeah, so there was, it was quite a good um, scene for, for music, area orchestras um, and the school orchestra and the, so the city youth orchestra and the Hampshire youth orchestra set up and um, These so, youth orchestras is getting bigger and yeah, bigger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and there was the British Youth Wing Orchestra. I remember doing that one. So that was that was the world. Yeah, I was sort of involved with, and um, yeah, I did all the classical things. I got to play bits of clarinet concerto with with the school orchestra and things, so and the, and the local area ones and things. So that was the world. And I sort of left the folk as I got more and more into classical. And I loved classical. I remember my girlfriend when I was eighteen gave me a album of Wagner because she knew that's what I would like <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like the best of, of Wagner's ring cycle or something <laughs> uh, so yeah I was into that classical world got more and more into the classical world as I got older I suppose and I left the folk stuff that I'd sort of started from um, that got that sort of drifted into the distance um, as I got into my later teens mm. yeah and um yeah, so yeah, that was the world, really. Yeah, that's how you started off. That's how I started off, yeah. What about you, Nettie? Mm. Well, a completely different. So, um, my family isn't really that musical, but my elder brother is. Um, right. So he, he played piano and he did saxophone as well, but now he plays sousaphone. So he's, he's quite active, or has been, since, you know, obviously before all this. Um, but yeah, he does a lot of, lot of things on sousaphone and a lot of things on piano. And I remember when I was a lot younger, he would sit down at the piano with me and go through some of the real books and introduce me to some of the tunes, which was oh, really wow. fun. Right. Um, but when I was a little bit younger, I, I, I really couldn't wait to join the choir, the church choir, but you had to be seven. So I couldn't <laughs> wait to turn seven until I, <laughs> so that I could join the choir because I just loved singing. I, I think the music was something I always really loved. And I started playing piano. I started learning piano at the age of seven as well. So that was my big year was turning seven and being able to join the choir and being able to start piano lessons uh, and my brother my older brother 
um, Pete Robinson was always a big influence on me because he was the one musician in the in the family and he loved all his jazz and and other things as well. He used to play a lot of um, kind of classic kind of pop stuff uh, as well, which is which is really nice. So so yeah, he was he was my absolute biggest influence oh, great. and then I used to as I as I got a bit older and I kind of my mid-teens I started getting more into jazz so I used to go to the local library and, and get out cassettes <laughs> to listen I know cassettes I can't believe cassettes, it yeah. <laughs> I used to get cassettes out to listen kind of educate myself so that was it really so I used to just spend a lot of time listening to music up in my bedroom and uh, yeah it was uh, and at that point I um I was just singing in the choirs. I didn't think about singing anything jazz. It, right. it seemed it seemed like a, a world apart from what I did, and it never really occurred to me um, to sing anything other than all the choir choral stuff that I was doing. Uh, but it was only when my elder brother said to me, it's funny you listen to this music and yet you don't actually sing these songs. I thought, oh yeah. <laughs> so then I started trying to sing these songs, but with the choral kind of voice which obviously didn't really suit it very well at all. Uh, so then I started listening much more to singers and I would sing along and I would try and imitate the sounds that they, that they, that they made. Um, and then when I was a little older, when I was kind of mid, mid teens, maybe a bit, bit older, I got into playing clarinet. But really, I didn't want to play clarinet, I really wanted to play saxophone because right. that's what my brother did. He did yeah. saxophone, I wanted to copy yeah. him. He had tenor saxophone. Um, so I remember at that point I had um, an, an album of weather report um, and I was trying, playing along with my clarinet, trying to make it sound like a when soprano. Yeah. <laughs> so I go to my lesson and say, like, this sounds like a soprano. I was like, oh yes, I've made it. <laughs> and eventually when I turned 18, I then, um, I then got a saxophone for my 18th birthday, which was, which was great, yeah. Right. It's good to do it the right way around, isn't it, to do the clarinet first. Yes. There's how much I think you can't really. Oh, it's a lot yeah, harder to do. Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a strange sort of mixture. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. So who were your influences back then, um, vocally and also, you know, saxophone, obviously. You know, apart yeah. From well, um, so I would say in terms of saxophone, definitely Lester Young was my absolute absolute favourite <laughs> ever. And because, of course, he would perform a lot with Billie Holiday, so then I would listen to quite a lot of Billie Holiday recordings. So, so she would be one of the first influences. Um, Chet Baker is another one that I that I listen to a lot. Um, but before that, I was actually I, I listened to a lot of instrumental music. I was the first artist I really got into was Thelonious Monk. You know, absolutely obsessed with Thelonious Monk. And I, when I was at A level music, my my dissertation was on Thelonious Monk. So, uh, and I also really loved Charles Mingus. So those two were my absolute absolute tops. And then Lester Young, when I started playing saxophone, made sense mm -hmm. to me. Um, so those those three, and then yeah, got into Billie Holiday, Chet Baker. Yeah, I think those ones as mm -hmm. well. Um, but when I was um, in my teens again I started getting a series of magazines and CDs and if anyone remembers this but called the jazz greats and you get a magazine oh, wow. and you have a CD and each week or, or I can't remember if it was a week or month it would be on a different style of jazz or a different artist so it might be Chicago jazz or it might be Duke Ellington or it might be they tended to be quite old ones so there'd be lots of early sort of music from like 20s 30s 40s so I think it's mostly that sort of era. So I listened to a lot, a lot of music from the twenties up to the the forties. So I used to, yeah, listen to all those as well as My Thelonious Monk and Mingus and mm. Wayne Shorter mm. and yeah. Great Mingus. education, isn't it? Great yes. to, to, to have like a mm. you know going from you know, yeah. different genres and different, different eras. Yeah. It's an interesting um, kind of mixture because you know. Mingus and Monk aren't the easiest on the ear, are they? To start with. <laughs> no. um, but obviously the Chet Baker and Billie Holiday stuff is more, much more lyrical yeah, and, that's true. and melodic, I'd, I'd say. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's interesting. And what kind of stuff were you first getting into after Wagner? <laughs> yeah, it was after Wagner, actually. Yeah, no, it was. No, so then I went to university and somebody, yeah, somebody in the in the halls of residence was buying a saxophone and, and I thought, oh, yeah, wanted to play saxophone he's buying a saxophone with his grant 
<laughs> I could do that as well. That's a good idea. I'll spend some, I'll buy a saxophone in the days when there were grants, you know. <laughs> um, uh, so I did, yeah. And 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 then somebody came up, knocked on my door, and said, "Oh, we're having a jazz workshop. I hear you've got a saxophone." I said, "Well, I only just bought it. I don't know anything about it. I really don't know how to play it at all." So it doesn't matter. Come to the jazz workshop. It's fine. <laughs> So that was my first um, experience with jazz, you know, and then, uh, yeah, what a disaster that was, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had a nice easy life, but um, yeah, I ended up um, pursuing that, then, you know, it just, it just obviously became a huge obsession after that, and uh, influences earlier, I suppose Art Pepper was a, an early influence, who I discovered, um, um, at that time, around that time, definitely, and uh, I had a year abroad because I was studying languages at the time. So I remember going abroad and playing a lot of music then. Um, yeah, in Germany, you mean? in Germany, uh, France oh, and Germany. France well, Frederick, yeah. yeah, mostly Germany Most was Germany. the one where I really got into music in yeah. a big way. And somebody said, "Oh, you could, you could, um, you could just stay here in Germany and, and play music. Why don't you do that?" Oh, could I? Ooh, I did, you know, it's like, oh, and that's sort of they are, fuck it, maybe I can do this. So then I, yeah, so, and then I went on and did music college and so on after that. Um, but yeah, early influences, yeah, Art Pepper was one of, one of the early ones. Um, and all the, yeah, I mean, all the, you know, you Paul of Desmond course you did. Well, Paul Desmond yeah, yeah. would have been around that time, he would have been, I still love Paul Desmond, obviously. Yeah. Well, you um, mainly listen to the alto players. Oh, uh, 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 no, 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 Zoot Sims, actually, I remember, okay, tenor player, yeah. yeah, I loved Zoot Sims, actually, and that, that, you know, and Stan Getz, and yeah. so, yeah, no, it wasn't just alto, no. Um, but that was your first saxophone, was it the alto? Was alto, oh, yeah. yeah, I did get a tenor at some point, but no, it was always alto that I, I, I focused on, yeah. and that, um, yeah, and that whole, yeah, and, you know, Cannibal, and, you know, all the, Ken Garrett later on, you know, all the, all the, the Coltrane, you know, all, obviously you come across everybody, don't you? And, yeah. and then you realise, you know, it's just such a huge world there that isn't just Wagner that, um, <laughs> that opens up. There is more to work than, to the music life than, than Wagner. And, yes. Although I'd still love, um, you know, classical yeah. uh, music. Um, yeah, uh, so that that was obviously a, a big influence. So then when I went to Guildhall, eventually I went to Leeds College and, I, and then later on postgraduate at Guildhall and there, there was this amazing um, musician who was sort of on the postgraduate course, but a separate one from the jazz course that I was on. And he was called Tim Garland. And um, he was like a phenomenal musician. And uh, he had a band called Lammas, which did sort of folk, Irish, yeah. Celtic music mixed with, with jazz and so on. And had a lot of um, quite famous jazz, uh, sorry, famous folk musicians in it. And sort of crossover things. And, oh, so that um, would have really ticked your. Ticked yeah. Your yeah. Yeah. yeah, I heard. I thought, oh, well, this is amazing. And I remember when I was ten. You know. Yeah. Did, so you get your dad on the phone. It's like, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know. So it all sort of, and then I started sort of, you know, listening to other music like Jan Garbrecht and that kind of world where yeah. there's a lot of sort of folk, uh, you know, the musics from around the world. Uh, and so that that was when I was at Guildhall. So that was a kind of that sort of influence. Um, so yeah. So. Um, yeah, so the whole whole mix really, um, a gradual. Quite, I guess I was quite because I did a language degree first. I was quite a bit older than. You see, it took, took me quite a long time to to gradually find my way. Well, but I guess it's true for most people, isn't it? It takes yeah, a while yeah. to sort of find what you're trying to do in life and what what you know all your sort of musical influences coming together and so on. So yeah, it can be at any stage, can't it? You know, some people find their voice. Mm. Very much so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So you graduated from, say, from the Guildhall. Mm. What were your kind of aspirations then? Did you want to get into writing, make, doing your own band? Uh, would you become a gigging musician? <laughs> Did you? What was your What was your next step? I think yeah, that's right. When I think I graduated, I think I was just trying to survive. I think you think I, and I don't think I was. No, I, I don't think I sort of took a, a particularly composing option or any of those sort of arranging options when I was at Guildhall. Shame, because, you know, that would have been really good. No, I think I was just trying to be a musician, you know, and whatever that meant to me at the time was playing gigs. That's what I would have aimed to do. And um, te obviously, you're going to do some teaching as part of that career. And I just would do, 
I think I had business cards made and it said something like, you know, good saxophone, clarinet, flute, all styles. <laughs> <laughs> all and somebody styles. said, what does that mean? You know, what do you mean by that? I, I, I just thought I'm trying to get some gigs, you know. Yeah, I was pretty, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't particularly um, focused on, yeah, I didn't really expect I'd, I'd do much, um, you know, on my, my own, or my own band or anything like that. And then, yeah, and then gradually, I, there was a lovely band I was in, actually, at Guildhall that, that did a, a fantastic recording, actually. Um, I didn't write any of the tune. They were written by um, the guitarist, who, oh, who yeah. was called Andy Moss. Yeah. And uh, he wrote lovely tunes, and they were sort of Pat Metheny-esque, so oh, very sort of, um, yeah. lyrical, folk-influenced. Um, yeah. We did a folk song, yeah. actually, um, I remember. And... Uh, and the band was amazing. It had Neil and Gilly on piano. Who's, who's, he's uh, great. He's yeah. great, isn't yeah. he? And oh, what a band! It was an incredible band. Were um, these guys from the college? No, he well, he was at Royal College actually. I think right. he was finished at the Royal College, and we ended up working with the, a percussionist with that band because it had like drums and percussion. And one of the percussion we used was Rob Millett, who was a friend of oh, Neil and Gilly. Nice. So that kind of I met Rob like that. And Rob's in your. You're that's right so then that became yeah. you know that's right that was that connection so yeah so my first efforts of composition would have been for this band with Neil and Gilly and this, it was called Within the Word um, and Andy Moss was a guitarist who led it and uh, wrote all the tunes and I'd sort of started to sort of slot it you know trying to write some tunes trying to squeeze one of your ones yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and he was great musician obviously and um, but he became a Roman Catholic priest Oh, wow. Um, and he's since, you know, just stopped, obviously, yeah, playing guitar and, and writing music and things. So, yeah, he just, yeah, he's amazing. He became a sort of Christian and then, and then, uh, and then a Catholic. And because he wasn't, when I first met him, he wasn't yeah. religious at all when I first wow, met him. Wow, yeah. Yeah, you know, Chris, Christian, then a Catholic, and then a, a Roman Catholic priest, yeah. And then didn't he move that. to... He did, yeah, I'm not sure where he is now. Yeah, but yeah, so um, so yeah, that was and so yeah, I did start sort of the odd tune, and there is um, so the, there's the first first couple of tunes um, that are then appeared on my when I did after that band sort of, I guess I guess because Andy Moss became a Roman Catholic priest, that, <laughs> that band didn't um, was no longer led by him, and yeah. so I was sort of trying to get gigs for this band. Mm. But actually, I was thinking, in a way, somebody said to you, why are you trying to get, because you know, it's not your band, it's like, why don't you form your own band, basically, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. So I thought, oh, okay, so then I, and so I did, I got a vibe player, um, eventually we got the vibes player, I got the sort of concept of the band was vibes, guitar, um, bass and drums. And, and, and this was the first time you would... That's right, drums. yeah, and so the band that recorded the first album was Gary Wilcox on drums. And an Australian guitarist who was amazing called uh, Mark Johns, um, and then Andy Hamill on bass and Rob Millett on vibes. Oh. And those two are still the original members. The <laughs> they're they're still they're in the band. <laughs> and, the, and the other's been replaced by uh, Milo Fell on drums and Mike Outram on guitar. So that's the lineup that's been since about two thousand, I should think, oh, something like great. that. So yeah, it's, it's a long amazing. time. So the it's first album was in ninety seven. Yeah. With Gary Wilcox and Mark Jones, uh, it's called High Seas, and I'm pretty sure High Seas, the the tune I wrote that for the yeah, yeah, the other yeah, band yeah, initially, word, and yeah. I think we played it perhaps under that band. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of gone from there, really. Mm. Yeah, we've done four albums, is it? Yeah, you have, and then four, you've got another two and a half, two and a half. in the making. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah. after you left. Um, Kind of college. When did you start to do? Um, oh, you know, obviously you were in, you, you said you were into singing the standards yeah. now and playing saxophone. So how did you go about kind of doing public performances or groups or yeah, well, singing out, singing out live as it were? Yeah, it was. It was uh, well. I was in Chichester. That's where I was. I studied. I did fine art with music and then stayed on at the college to do the jazz diploma, which was great. It was really amazing. I loved it. Um, so it was uh, it was that time when I was at the college that I started getting duo gigs with um, with someone that became my housemates actually, okay. uh, Louise Maggs, who was a great guitarist, and we used to have 
really regular uh, gigs round and about the area and and a little bit further afield so round Chichester and up to Reading and a few other places so it was really nice so that was the that was the first thing I did and then and then when we got together you sometimes came and joined yeah. in a couple of cheeks uh -huh. as well didn't yeah, you yeah we did yeah, yeah. So, and then when I eventually moved away from Chichester and came up to this part of the world, I then started thinking about trying to get something together myself. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't, I didn't form a, any band as such to begin with. I think to start with, I was just trying to do arrangements of songs and trying to do different things, different, different sort of lineups. Yeah, so, uh, and then eventually I, I sort of thought about this little big band idea, mm, mm. which similar to, well, not similar to you, but similar in the sense I wanted something that wasn't, um, wasn't just a, a regular piano-based drum setup. I wanted yeah, it piano, to be, yeah. no, I like, the piano is great, of course. Uh, but, um, so I did, something different. yeah, so I wanted something different. So, um, so then I came up with the concept of the little big band, which was, um, which was a five piece, so myself, of course, and then two horns, so trombone taking the brass section and Tony um, taking like the, the saxophone section, and then um, bass and drums. So the, the horns would provide the harmony, and I would sort of listen to Count Basie recordings and, and try to, and Duke Ellington, and then sort of rearrange them for, for this lineup. Right. And Which did you really sing fun. and play saxophone? Uh, I I basically just sang on that. There was yeah. I later didn't. on you had done that. Later on, but not in the album. The not first in the album. album no, no. no. Later right. on, I did. No, I, so it's just two horns. Just two horns. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it was it was great fun. It yeah. was and it was really really nice immersing myself in all the music and trying to think how <laughs> I could reduce it down to this yeah. and still keep the some something some of, the, of the essence yeah. of the music yeah. as well as making quite free. I wanted it to be quite free and open so there was there was space for the horns to stretch out and and, and to, so it's kind of a mixture it's just of the kind of like, collective improvisation yeah. from Mingus sort of That's difference, right. It, wasn't it, it? it you was. had that vibe. Yes. But also the sort of the really? arrangement, some of it was set as it were, for Camp Basie and Duke Ellington, you should have written arrangements. Great. So it's a bit of a Fantastic mixture. concept. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, concept. Concept. It ticks so many boxes. <laughs> yeah. It's lovely, lovely, yeah, lovely band. Yeah, yeah really it's good. really fun. Mm. Is that band yeah. still going? Uh, well, <laughs> it's I guess difficult. it's your arrangement and you can yeah. kind of change Yeah, uh, yeah so, so occasionally, I've, occasionally I've got it out, you know, yeah. I've got things out the cupboard yeah. and we've, yeah. we've booked to booked to something. Yeah, um, yeah obviously it's, it's difficult because it's a five piece, it's quite hard to find venues for that as yeah. a number. Um, yeah, it's, it's tricky isn't it? And we, uh, we also did a programme of Chet Baker numbers where yeah, I, we did. so it was still the little big band, still the same lineup, but I took uh, Chet Baker recordings and and sort of arrange those as well. Oh, so wow. sometimes like transcribed solos and maybe harmonise them or just took things from the arrangements yeah. and, and did mm. something with them. So it's quite it's quite fun. Oh, um, we also the, <laughs> and then we also did um, uh, a set little big band lineup again of folk music. So which again kind of links to. Mm. Yeah. yeah, your thing. So, yeah. um, so a real mixture of things like kind of instrumentals, which is well, I would do saxophone on that. Yes. And yes, some that. really really old English songs, some Russian folk songs, and various things. Yeah, lots of a real mixture of things, which was really fun. And again, mm. it was yeah. it was fun just using that lineup yeah. as well. Yeah. It was yeah. it was good. So yeah, that's come out. Of, that's come out occasionally yeah. as well, wasn't it? Like yeah. That program. Yeah. Music. Yeah. It's very fun. And did you record that? Did you say? We haven't recorded no, that no, one, but no. only yeah. the first. The first album the was the Cat Basie Duke Ellington album. Yeah. 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 Uh, Little Big Band Plays, wasn't it? Yeah. Was yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it got um, it got good reviews it and so on, reviews, but yeah. um, they sort of missed the whole point of it. You know, the whole point is that it's um, it's not just some arrangements from by a singer of those of, you know there's no piano in the band it's yeah. it is just two horns basically i mean that's pretty rare yeah yes. but no <laughs> just, just, just completely missed oh, well, all that it was fun to do that it. it's always nice when we get them out again because actually yeah. i bought these proper big band <laughs> stands and i and i i made some glittery logos of lbb for little big yeah, band and right, then we'd yeah. we'd come up with our yeah. stands yeah. And there was one hilarious time we, we did a gig somewhere, I forget where it was now, 
and I, I, you know, we arrived, and I said, "Oh, so where's the where's the rest of the band arriving?" Yeah. No, no, it's just us. Right, that's it's it. Like yeah, because yeah, they did expect, you know, a trumpet. Maybe is, is it, there a trumpet? It, it's the little big band, is it? No, just a yeah. trombone. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it, it does. It just does work. It's great. Really it's amazing well. how full it sounds it's, when yeah, you when it you. It is amazing. <laughs> it's a great band. It's really, really great. Um, yeah. Yeah, we used to sit down for the and stand, stand up for solos, solos like you would in a big yeah. band. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun. It was. A, it was, it was a, fun. Yeah, but yeah, we did have some lovely times. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Yeah, it was good fun. So was that the first kind of times you 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 played together in the duo kind of? Yeah, yeah. I suppose it would have been. The, yeah, I first guess. Proper project. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely the first first kind of project for sure. Yes. Absolutely. That was yeah. the first proper project. Definitely. Yeah. Was soon after we got married, wasn't it? Yeah. You recorded that. Yes. Two thousand nine, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. But we'd met through a composer who was professor of music at Chichester. Mm. And I used to play for him in his um, events, yeah. you know, big right. concerts that yeah. he would put on. And one of his biggest things was the Jazz Mass, which was a two-hour-long yeah. jazz. Literally work. a mass, you know, with uh, yeah. in, in Latin. In Latin. Is it Latin? Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. of it. Yeah, it's yeah. all Latin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 so, and... Um, and Shane didn't have your right, your friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he must have come. I think he did. No, he would have come across him. I'm he sure because yeah. he was in that area as well, wasn't yeah. he? Anyway, um, yeah. So it was. Uh, Nettie was in the choir, and I was in the jazz ensemble, and there was um, church organ. Yeah, it's like a massive, you know, epic kind it's of huge. work. Yeah, and we would have sort of come across each other then because that was recorded in. 2000 wasn't it? Was just around then yeah and then so, yeah. there was another concert that he Robert Payton organized and I was playing and again you were a soloist that time soloist, yeah, and yeah. then that was like a few a year Lovely later or something, later. something. Yeah, and, then, my last year. and then another one uh, where Nettie was in the audience supporting the same the, the, this, the, the, same the, this, the, the, the Rob Payton's like, the, the latest concert and I walked in uh, <laughs> to this uh, church it was in a church and mm. I saw this Young lady, <laughs> we, had, we had been there for a little remember. chat, <laughs> and I remember we started talking about Leslie Young. Yes, that's right. And I remember. I heard wedding bells then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was not many twenty-something-year-olds that you know, you would know that, chat right? about Leslie Young sort of happily. Yeah. So that was really amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was the first. So, yeah, and then. Uh, you say then the little big band was the first thing we did. Oh, first proper project. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah. Then I was playing with Michael Garrick's big band, mm -hmm. and I remember him saying, "Oh, if anyone needs a pianist, I'm, I will do up for doing a gig." And I thought, well, Nettie was wanting to do a um, program of Bill Evans music. Yes, yes, because I had lived for just a year on the Isle of Wight, okay. um, where my parents were living at the time, um, because I'd done some teacher training and, you know, I hadn't got a job at that point, so I moved, moved I was just in lodging, so I moved, th moved there for a year, but I, I met a whole group of musicians, we, I went to a sort of gig and a jam session and joined in with them, and then we started working together, which was really great, so it's like this little band of Musicians known each other ever since they were really young, uh, like teenagers or twenty somethings, uh, called the Phoenix, the Phoenix Jazz Ensemble, and it was great. Okay. So um, it was amazing. It was such a. It was so good to have met them on on the Isle of Wight, and we did loads of concerts and things together. We did a bit of recording, and the last thing I did with them was that they wanted to do a concert of Bill Evans music. And I didn't know any Bill Evans music, so I was learning all these complicated songs yeah and then when I moved to yeah. um up this way uh, I thought it's a shame I learned all those songs and we just did it for one concert so then I thought okay let's do a program of Bill Evans music yeah. and I can do all these songs again yeah. and then Tony said well I've got a pianist that you yeah. could yeah. uh yeah. you could use um, yeah. So that was it. So that mm. was the, the beginning of mm. my collaboration with Michael mm. Garrick. So mm. that was in 2009 mm. that I gave him all this music because I came to one of the, the mm, gigs, didn't did, I? Yeah, right. And then he deposited everything in the into this case. I thought, oh God, I'm never going to see that again. I thought, I thought I'm gonna, <laughs> he was going to forget all about that. And then we met up for a rehearsal and he'd like covered it in loads of workings out. And 
And it was great, and it was so nice because he talked about his dealings with um, Bill Evans, mm. how he met him and had a lesson mm. with him, and it Did was just so nice. Yeah, nearly killed him, but... Yeah, that's right, he was in his Reliant Robin, wasn't he? Michael Garrett had Reliant Robin, and Bill Evans was in the passenger seat, and this truck came the other direction, and he was like, oh, Reliant Robin, and Bill was in the passenger seat, and this truck came the other direction with some rubble on the yeah. back, and the rubble bounced off and hit the windscreen. But actually glanced off instead of crushing. Of the Reliant it. Robin, and, and fortunately didn't go through the windscreen and kill Bill Evans. Yeah, that's right. Oh my God, my God. God. The, the whole history of jazz would have been different. Completely yeah. different. That's so, <laughs> so it was funny. Yeah, so he got that, which we didn't know. There was it any connection no with Michael, yeah. and he had a handwritten note, didn't he? Yeah, Bill he was Evans. like, he, yeah, we were round at his uh, doing some, I don't know, having dinner, but we'd probably done some rehearsing before. And he came with this pristine envelope, and he got it out, and it was hotel note paper that Bill Evans had had drawn out lines, he'd written out Time Remembered. So the, oh, um, by hand. By yeah. hand. I know. Amazing. It's ridiculous. And then he had a lovely note at the bottom saying, thanks so much for, you know, like, you know, it was yeah, so nice, and wasn't saying it? good luck with, your, good luck with your, all your, your music. It's or, wonderful or something. It was something yeah, lovely. Yeah, it was like really lovely. lovely. And it was just so and nice. When you meet your heroes and they're oh, nice people. Incredible. Incredible. I know. Yeah, so right. it was... Yeah. So that was really lovely that that actually made a lot of sense because I think he just told that story yeah. in the gig because I hadn't heard this before no, and it's like no. oh my gosh I didn't yeah, know he'd actually met yeah, it so right. so it was really nice and obviously that led on to this amazing yeah collaboration, collaboration with Michael with Garrick Michael. Yeah. and an album of Bill Evans yeah. stuff at first that was yeah. the first thing he did but I think also included some songs of, of Michael yeah, didn't yeah. it and then and then another album of where he'd uh, taken poems. And set the poems to the music and called the band the Lyric Ensemble. Yeah. yeah. And he died just before that al album came out. Yeah, so two months process. before we, mm -hmm. um, so two months after we'd recorded it, uh, it was in November, November the 11th, mm -hmm. that we had a phone call saying he hadn't made it through surgery. Good. So yeah. I was pretty devastated because yeah. uh, that was so so you know grateful that we had recorded all this yeah. lovely music yeah. with him yeah, yeah. So, yeah and he'd written a lot of songs for you yeah it was just yeah it was a great privilege to have had all that written yeah. for me yeah amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really great yeah. yeah and you've also done that haven't you you've written taken poems and yeah well that's right yeah. so once michael died it felt like that was something that we i i I'd never done it before. I never thought of doing it before. But yeah, it just seemed like a natural thing to do to sort of follow in his footsteps, I suppose, yeah. and and try seeing. Ooh, if I take a poem, can I set that to music? Which sort of thing classical um, composers have done a lot, obviously, yeah. but yeah. not so many jazz no. um, musicians. So many, yeah. And then, um, and then I found that I, you know I, I I liked doing it, and it gives you you know the words give you a lot. Obviously, the, you know, there's a rhythmic aspect to the words. There's an emotional, you know, topic. You know, the yeah. sort of atmosphere of the words. There's so much uh, that that you have, um, and I found it, you know, quite quite nice to. Uh, yeah, he turned out. Yeah, he's really great yeah, today. Um, he's written about I don't know, ten or eleven what, or yeah, something. Like that. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Yeah. It's it so, just seems um, to have a real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 definitely. Yeah, we would like to. Yeah, we'd love to do that. Yeah, we toured with. Um, the Michaels album, the Lyric Ensemble, Home Thoughts. Yeah. Um, uh, we toured with Nicky Isles. We did, yeah. The gigs that we would, would have been with Michael. With Michael, yeah, with yeah. Nicky Isles. Um, but then since then, we haven't managed to get our act together <laughs> to actually record yeah. the new stuff. But that was always the intention. But obviously, yeah. things like the last year has made made a bit, All bit kind tricky of plans, <laughs> difficult yeah. whatever you were trying yeah. to do isn't but there's it? so many but other still things a plan. yeah still a, plan. still a plan but we've got all your things to record as well which i think yeah, is really important too yeah so, yeah. Stuff to so many things on. just yeah. but you're just quite amazing. active in the kind of the way out west kind of collaborative aren't you yes right, good yeah. um Good. good point yeah yeah that's right yeah we, yes. we were around as founding members we I suppose, right at the beginning, right at the when beginning when, yeah. when, when of that well out west is a collective of jazz musicians in west london and uh, it was about 2004 ish was wasn't it that when it formed with eddie harvey was one of the founding tim members. Of tim whitehead yeah it's his concept really and yeah so we've uh, we're still going yeah and and hopefully now that covid is maybe 
fading, we'll we'll actually get to to be working again together as a collective. Yeah. In, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, and you guys have gigs like maybe once or twice a year with that doing your own something like that. Yeah, it depends, it, doesn't we've it? We've had various um, sort of, uh, ways that where West has worked. Um, we've had various kinds of gigs. And, so you'd lead it, yeah. um, but you yeah. might. I mean, for example. Tony would probably do more than that because other people would ask him to do his project. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, there's, so, there's lots of sort of different um, coming yeah, together, yeah. different combinations of yeah. where West musicians together. And we would sometimes get together like at Christmas. We'd do a collective all together, all the whole collective, and then yeah. other times we'd do a, a week. At one point we were doing weekly gigs, mm. and and one person would lead that. It'd be your um, gig, night yeah, and yeah. you yeah. choose you know how you would uh, would you would then bring in musicians from outside of the collective like um, when i've done it i've obviously used my project of course, yeah, that yeah, he's yeah. done little big band gigs yeah, yeah. which involve yeah. other musicians and so on yeah. so it's a good way of having a project yeah you know getting something together for a specific concert or Definitely, something yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So we've had all, all kinds of it's a it's a lovely it's it's you know i think um my experience of jazz um, in London, you know, it's it's pretty lonely and really tough. And um, I found having this collective, you know, and the idea is we sort of in the same sort of local area um, was a really, you know, lovely experience to feel that you're not alone. And, um, you know, there's there's other people, um, mm. you know, trying to, and you can sort of hustle gigs, therefore you can sort of you yeah, know, together. hustle together and mm. find venues together and say let's put this on together you know yeah like-minded people yes exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like, yeah. yeah you've also got a big band together haven't you yes <laughs> now that was interesting the way that that began um so that was especially for tony's 50th birthday last year last year yes last year um yeah i thought it would be It'd be fun to to um, do big band arrangements of some of his project tunes, and it was supposed to be like a present. <laughs> Amazing present. <laughs> Great present. So, um, so then for the his fiftieth, you actually wrote a couple as well, didn't you? Yes, because Leslie was doing all this work for, for <laughs> my fiftieth um, birthday party. It's like a concert, big like concert, concert yeah. And we were gonna, the first time this big band came out, and so then I, she was doing all these arrangements. Of, Maybe I ought to do some of this work oh, as well. Job, so so yeah. I did, I'd started doing so some. Now we've, I've, uh, we've, we've since then, we've both you done, know, about done a the lot. Same, I think. Yeah, yeah. we've got loads now. Yeah. Then. So that first concert came about. Um, and we had probably, we had the lyric ensemble. Um, um, did the, you know, the, the, your project? We had my project playing. And then the and second then half, second we half did was the big band. Because we band. didn't have enough to do a whole concert. Yeah, yeah. So. so that so was its a, first outing. But it was a really fun. Amazing, it was yeah. a fun night, wasn't oh, it? Because there was the place was packed. It was amazing. Yeah, it was it's lovely. really good crowds. Where did you do the concert? It was Jags. Like Jags. Oh, you know, Jags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so that was, uh, yeah, great. lovely, lovely band. Obviously, the way out west saxophone section. Yeah. And uh, well, was, and and my project was project. the rhythm section, and then uh, the brass was a sort of assorted. Yeah, uh, mixture between you. One trumpet player. Yeah. <laughs> no, we had the real <laughs> the four real cool section. Four. I think you could do it as a five piece. And, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I've thought about that actually. Yeah. We have, in fact, we have done one of those. Yeah. Reduced for the little big band. Oh, we yeah, have done it right. the we we oh have. that's right yeah yeah we have done it so you take a five piece band put it to big band and reduce it back down to <laughs> <laughs> a different band that's not that ridiculous that's right. it's had three, three versions out of the that's original right. uh, to Brollo's Monkey which is dedicated to my father uh, Brollo which is his name and um, so yeah it came out on uh, Lowland's album my project and then we expanded that to the big band uh, the, the next year Tony Jazz Orchestra it's called and then, then we reduced that version <laughs> back down back down to Fanetti's little big band, which yeah. obviously is a different lineup again. Which is, so. and we did, and that's when you played saxophone, actually. Yes. Isn't it? So we had a three part. Yeah. Must be great, great tunes then. It's a nice, yeah. format. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a good, yeah, it's a nice piece. It's that's a nice great. piece. Yeah, it's a good tune. Yeah. Yeah. So any plans to do more of that? Yeah, you, you, yeah. I think you are planning to do that. Yes. Maybe next year. 
Yeah, next year we've got another big birthday actually. Yeah. So it's it's um, a few years on since the first so a few outing. More, a few more treats. We've got enough for a whole week now. Whole exactly. We've, of... Even an encore. We've got an encore yeah. fix. <laughs> enough well. for an encore. <laughs> Which actually I rewrote because um, I knew it needed rewriting because it needs conducting the encore piece. So, so over a lot, that was one of the things. <laughs> yes, I've written myself out of it so I can conduct. <laughs> so bits of it anyway. Um, and that was a project that I made sure I did o over the lockdown. That was one yeah. of the first things I did in uh, January, yeah, wasn't it? That's to right. make sure yeah. I, I got that done. Yeah. And hopefully it will work better when we do get so. back together. It will be a bit easier. So, yeah, it's fun. I'd like to do mm. another one. I have to think which... Uh, there's a few I've got in my head of mm. tunes that I'd like mm. to do for yeah. that. I haven't done yeah. an arrangement for a while. Mm. So, mm. so maybe... So I was going to ask you about current projects and then maybe mm -hmm. things you... You know, maybe further further ahead, some of the things you're mm. looking to do. Well, I guess the current thing with the lockdown was the soirees, wasn't it? That yes. was our, that was that's something that we started doing for fun um, a few years ago. Yeah. Not not streamed, not because of lockdown. Um, just in our lounge, we just thought, um, you know, uh, yeah. uh, we could actually squeeze in about twenty people yeah. to our lounge for a concert, and we started doing. Just, just thought it'd be nice to do because it's a uh, yeah it's a uh, sometimes you go to venues they like a they've got a certain type of music that they want you to do and I thought well some of these venues I don't really fit that criteria that they want um, so I thought well if we have it at ours we can say what the program is and people come if they want to and if they exactly. don't then they don't have to come but um, so it meant we had completely control over it mm. but what was great about it was you have this lovely intimate. Yeah. to the setting yeah. and it's a bit like a party so yeah. some people will bring bottles of wine along <laughs> and would, yeah. uh, so yeah. as if it's a party or a box of chocolates and yeah. and we'd always do snacks in the break and our lovely yeah. neighbours would lend us some fold up chairs so we could expand, extend, yeah. extend the yeah. seating area and they'd sit in the kitchen on bar stools mm. Mm. across the breakfast bar and do snacks and mm. help out with drinks yeah. it was amazing yeah, so it's it great, great, really nice great atmosphere and um, really really great yeah i love and it we got used to um performing more together we both got better at playing piano and yeah, uh, yeah. accompanying each other and sort yeah. around and all that stuff so we and we've done that for a few years we did you know quite a few concerts in a year, I think was it seven in the first year or something, something like that. Something like but that. we then, maybe if one had been really subscribed, like really popular, then we'd yeah. do the same program like yes. two weeks later. That's right. So yeah. we need the room set up and have to kind of deal with the mess for a bit and then uh, <laughs> yeah, do it again yeah. and then finally pack up. That's a bit like the, 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 the New York Jazz Club, two seats, two seats, yeah, that's right, yeah. 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 yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we have ended up doing that because yeah. we, you know, we've got a certain mailing list and you've got. You know, yeah. student, lot of students and friends who want to come, and then their friends would come. So it's, gradually yeah. expands expanded, to our mailing list for mm. this. Yeah, it gets it's a bit bigger, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So Which is great. It's really lovely. nice. And then, of course, lockdown um, happened, and of course, you know, there was no way we were going to be allowed to have people in our flat. Yeah, not even um, once, Not like even that. at the moment. So, yeah. um, uh, so, and then I don't know. I guess the whole world was talking about streaming. So okay, okay, let's so give it a go. We, so we tried them with our friend, our technical with our technical <laughs> <laughs> expert over here, always on the phone. Terence, you've got another question on the iPad. Oh my gosh, I can't get it to work. How did you get onto YouTube? Oh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So with your help, we managed to get it through. So that was, I suppose, the, the most recent project, and we had yeah. we've done loads of with nice yeah. soirees. I guess what's really nice is that when things are open up and we have people back in again, mm. there's there's people that tuned in from abroad that yeah. would love to tune in again. Yeah. So we yeah. thought, well, we'll probably just we will, yeah. keep that option going, yeah, right. and then That's people the from around the world yeah. can yeah, still definitely. can still watch. And my family, you know, yeah, my, my more... parents were really yeah, exactly. pleased you know, never, to be there. You know, yeah, I've got my um, nephew lives in Durham, and my niece lives in. Yeah, you know, my, yeah. up there, and my sister lives in Liverpool. Yeah. My brother lives down in Cornwall. Yeah. So, and there's no way they're going to just pop up for a exactly. You know, it's a good way just yeah, yeah. Get them involved. So, so, yeah. so it was quite nice yeah. to to have had yeah. that as a, a an idea because I would yeah. never have thought of it before. No. Yeah, yeah. So, so that that's was, been fun. That was great. Um, yeah. Any plans for a live audience soiree in there after June? Love to do that. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to see. Um, we haven't really not for the summer, have we? We're probably not to. We'll wait until because we need to obviously have time to prepare another program. So that's yeah, part of it. Is actually literally deciding yeah. what the program's going to yeah, be, preparing, practice, yeah, and 
have enough time in advance to tell yeah, people. It would about be it. the autumn. Yeah, sometime in the autumn probably. Yeah, I expect. Yeah, I so we haven't planned to do yeah, that. Yeah. No. But um, yeah, what do our plans? Well, my for? well, my, obviously my recent venture is is all these. Uh, all the Russian songs, yeah. the Russian, the program yeah. Russian songs, which is... So how did you get into doing that? <laughs> well, to cut a long story short, it's because I started learning the language about six and so, six and a bit years ago. And so initially just obviously learning the language. And then I thought, oh, maybe it'd be quite nice to learn a song. That'd be fun. So I just remember <laughs> searching on YouTube, just coming up with a song, thinking, oh, I'll have a go at this one. It hasn't got too many words. I should be able to remember that all right. And from there, I then just started finding more songs. And then sometimes some one of the Russian people that I know or a friend would suggest a song. Not always ones that I'd like to do, but sometimes they were. And then gradually I'm expanding my repertoire. So I think I've got about you know, 20 or so songs that I could that now, and I'm gradually expanding. In fact, we're doing an... I'm doing one soon. I've been asked to, to perform at this... Obviously, it's an online concert at the moment, but... It's um, it would have been the two hundred and twenty second birthday of Pushkin, so I, which is one of their famous, um, famous kind of poets and uh, playwrights. So I have uh, learned the song, which is a setting of one of his poems, to Rimsky Korsakov, mm. which is mm. really nice right. song. Right. So um, so we've gone through the the chart, and you've you've basically translated what the piano the score would be score. in terms of the chords. <laughs> so we're not having to we're not literally playing the actual no. classical music but we're it's, just it's getting a, the chord symbols. But yeah. Yeah, that's which is really yeah. it's really nice. That's something yeah. different, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's it's been really it's been really nice to have that um that sort of project because it's it's lovely doing something different. Totally, and totally. and um and I'll, at yeah. some point I'll be able to do this concert at Pushkin House. Yeah. And at some point, there's another place, uh, the Russia House in Kensington, that I've been asked to do a collaborative concert by um, a poet, a Russian poet, who wants me to do a sort of joint thing with him. So, so at some point, uh, we'll do that as well. So there's lots of, I feel like there's lots of opportunities and, uh, and I think more will come out of the woodwork. Um, it, yeah, because mm. it, it seems that there aren't many people that do Russian songs in this country. Mm. So... Um, mm. So yeah, so. No. and not only that, but you, you can do the Russian songs, and you've got the improvisation element. That's true. The jazz, yes. you know, a folk. Yeah. You know, you, you're ticking lots of boxes. You can mm. do it in a very different way. Yeah. Than yeah. Other people could do it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So and what about you, Tony? What about your projects? Well, I guess. Um, you, I guess we were saying before that you've written. Yeah. Music this year. That's right. Yeah, in the lockdown. Yeah, I guess I finally got my act together and and got a sort of creative um force going again and um, so in this lockdown latest lockdown I, I managed to write okay. some new music which is great and um that just started to um, rehearse with my project um that music and hopefully um it will we will record all that at some point mm. um we had already got almost an album uh, recorded so that, that that would yeah that's the plan really is to record mm. um, all this new music and when gigs open up again start gigging them uh, and obviously you know releasing an album um, mm. that that would be three. lovely which is, or three exactly yeah we've <laughs> got a few albums worth of material now mm. um, but yeah so I haven't uh, got any specific plans for where we're going to do gigs or whatever but that is. That would be nice, yeah, to do that. Mm -hmm. And obviously, and also then there's all the, the poetry that we mentioned earlier, the songs that we uh, yeah. um, I've written for Nettie, and yeah. that would be great to record those as well, because yeah, they're probably. all sitting there as well. Absolutely. So, yeah, there's plenty. And then obviously there's the big band, um, which would be great if we could somehow record that. Um, yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome as well. Yeah. We'll see, so yeah. That's, uh, another, another thing. Well, it's good to have lots of stuff ready to go rather than <laughs> nothing ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a great way to be. Yeah. yeah. So mm. fantastic. Mm. Well, thanks, guys. Great, yeah, great well, story. Yeah, been, thank you. Really thanks, yeah, thank you so much. Your, it's been great. For asking us. Yeah. Yeah. And we're playing in November, aren't we? We're doing, we are. Um, we are indeed, yes. Celebration of Michael Garrick in November. That's right. Which, and, and, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah that'd be yeah. lovely. Yeah. 
Yes, and that will be part of 10 years of his? Yeah, it'll be 10 years That's of his, right, yes. his passing, which is, right. can't believe it's been 10 years, but it'll be really nice to celebrate all, you know, his legacy and yeah. all these wonderful songs that, that he wrote, yeah. which, yeah, um, sure. yeah, which yeah. would be so nice if more people heard them. Yeah, I like to keep that yeah. torch burning that side because he had yeah. so many strands to his his music making and creative output, and this is just one of the many the many things he did. Mm. All these songs and yeah, so yeah, he had a real sort of late flowering of uh, sort of creativity. I think in his yeah. last few years, um, writing his very intimate songs based on poems, yeah. um, and we had the, the trio. The, the, yeah, the, the we used to do Some of you just a duo that you would do, and yeah. I'd sort of join them. Maybe just with uh, Matt Ridley on bass yeah. sometimes. And Matt's going to be joining us. So Matt's going to be joining us, and also yeah. Chris Nichols will be with us as yeah. well. That's um, right. yeah. And and both of both of them used to perform with Michael when yeah. we had an expanded yeah. ensemble. So that would yeah. be really nice yeah. to get together yeah. and and play all this play all these mm. lovely songs again. Mm. It'd be great. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, thanks again, guys. Oh, thank you to you. Brilliant. Thank Brilliant. you. begins to wake sun through the mist will surely break in golden beams songs from the gathering birds arrive as the colors round them Become more clear Morning glory is risen once again And all of the world aglow with hope Pause Take a deep Breath. All of our wishes and desires meet with the growing bank of fires that lift the sky. The autumn hues that are ripe with yearning break a heart that their reds are turning gray. Love that will never stay. Giant boys, light 
wishes and desires meet with a growing bank of fires that lift the skies. Yet the autumn hues. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe now and please check out our Patreon page.